Hello, thank you for joining me again. Today I would like to talk to you about a book, TV series that I'm completely in love with. Um, the book is called Voyager by Diana Gabaldon. Um, it's, part, it's the third book in the series, uh, Outlander. Um, stars have made a TV series after it. And uh, now they're at their third season. Um, I haven't previously read the first and second book in the series. Um, the author Diana Gabaldon has, I believe, nine books in this series. And I've only read the third novel. Um, and from what I've read on Goodreads and other places, this is one of the most beloved novels in the series, this and the fifth, I believe. The first, obviously, because it introduces you to this world. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's talk a little bit about this, this novel and, well, yeah, this novel and the characters that, that are the lead characters. Um, so Outlander is the story, is the story of this woman um, Claire Fraser, well, yeah, um, she lives in the second, uh, the second, she lives, um, we, we see her right after the Second World War, I believe, um, that's in the first book, and so, she, in the, in the first book we meet her, she's just rekindling with her husband, Frank Randall, and she visits some stones uh, in Scotland, and at some point she's transported in time two centuries before and the 1700s. And there she meets, she gets into all sorts of trouble, <laughs> and she meets Jamie Fraser, whom she will end up being married to. <laughs> so we have this woman, Claire, who uh, is being married with two men at the same time, one from the future, I suppose, if we consider her being in the past, in the 1700s. So she's married with two, two men. Um, yeah, and the third book, um, if, yeah, if you haven't seen the first season or the second season of the movie, um, or read books, um, I'll just shortly tell you that, yeah, she, um, spoilers alert, by the way, um, if you don't want to hear about this, please, I don't know, <laughs> exit the video or something. Um, yeah, she ends up married with this man, and second, second book and series, we see her, and Jamie Fraser, and the, all the stuff they go through, and the, the second season, the second book ends with, um, yeah, with the ba Battle of Culloden, I believe. I, as I said, I haven't read the book, so I know that the second season ends up with Jamie on the battlefield. Um, there's a massive, massive battle where um, most, I believe, most of the Scottish clans have perished because it's based on real, real facts in history, from history. Um, and the third, the third book picks up um, on the Culloden field. Um, Jamie is badly injured. He's covered in, covered, surrounded by by bodies. It's pretty terrible. Um, at the end of the second season book, um, he kind of forcefully sent Claire away in the in the future in, from the time she came because she was pregnant with their child so he sends her away because he thinks they will all die on the on the Culloden field and yeah she's sent back well <laughs> forward I suppose and there she gets to yeah we see her ra uh, becoming a doctor raising her child um, with Frank, her other husband, um, 
and many many things happen but at some point obviously these two people they have to meet again so 20 years later um, after they separate was were forced to separate they many events bring them together again um, the TV series has done a great job I was I was completely loved with the first season second season uh, the reason I picked up the book was because I, I wanted to know <laughs> what happens next so I read the book and I knew what was going to happen um, when I, I started watching the, the season the third season some of the things don't happen as in the book but that is acceptable because it is sorry it is after all a movie TV series and it's a different medium so I, I believe they've done a great job the costume design um, the cinematography is beautiful you know how you, you see in movies you see people uh, they're completely wear costumes you know like and they're completely clean when they were, they're supposed to be injured dirty covered in mud well this this movie this tv series is ex is excellent uh, ronald moore i believe he's the director he's done a great job him and his team um so yeah it's a pleasure to watch if you haven't seen outlander you must check it out you, it, has, it combines history time travel romance um it's done beautifully um, also another thing that I really love about the TV series and the books um, is that as a reader and as a viewer you get to see like erotic scenes but they're not gratuitous um, they're very well done very well shot um, because one of the things that piss me off in when I watch movies if we talk about movies for a moment when I watch movies yeah it's you always see the females naked those portrayed like you know yeah it's i suppose it's nice to watch nudity i suppose but it always it annoys me when it's only the woman portrayed as a i don't know it's just uh, as sexy let's put it that way but i don't want to sound too like saying too much like it, it just annoys me when i and when I see just the women being made use of their body, I suppose. Um, and this movie just makes... Uh, this movie films both, both genders, both the female and the male characters. They're filmed in such a way, when you have love scenes, they're very believable, very beautifully done they're sensual but without being vulgar um they're funny oftentimes um yeah it's it's beautiful they're, as compared to other tv series maybe like game of thrones which i do like as well um it's not like sometimes with game of thrones i felt like you know that you had to be there to just throw it at you um although you know it was acceptable i suppose but in this is even more acceptable because you get to feel those characters you get to be you i don't know you feel like you know the characters you're very involved in the things that happen to them so it, it feels natural to see them making love to uh, see them argue to see them uh, fight um yeah so that's one of the main things that i love about um, outlander that it 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 feels real it doesn't feel uh forced or staged it just feels really natural although i'm sure the actors have practiced over and over again and you know <laughs> there's no like romance between them or whatever but uh, you never know but anyway uh they just do a very good job of portraying these characters and so as i was saying about the book i will read you a little bit if you don't know anything about uh, about outlander i'll read you 
or the third book me because I don't have the fourth book with me. Um, I will read you the prologue um, to give you a sense of the writing style of Diana Gabaldon, which is gorgeous. She writes so beautifully. Um, I've also read a book of hers on how to write sex scenes or love scenes, um, and it's one of the best books I've read on the subject. Um, I haven't read that many, to be honest, but if I were to recommend one, I would recommend her book. I think it's called How I Write Sex Scenes, or yeah, oh, I Give You My Body, or How I Write Sex, Love Scenes, Sex Scenes, something by Diana Gabaldon. Um, and yeah, she she just kind of explains how she does it using passages from her own books. She explains how um, how she writes these scenes that give you like sensuality, sensuality, like eroticism in them. But at the same time, it's not just that you get to see the characters and the events unfolding within those scenes as well. So it's it's very well done. Um, and Voyager, the third novel in the series, is one of the best examples because there's lots of quite <laughs> many erotic scenes, but like at the same time, yeah, they're in, they're within context. They're not just there. <laughs> they totally make sense, and they're so unexpected. Like especially, for example, when they, when Claire and Jamie first meet after 20 years and you expect that they will have this big romance like love scene at some point because it has to happen you know and it's it happens somewhere where you wouldn't you would never have thought about it okay so let let me read you the first well not the first the prologue um first i would like to say that this book as far as i remember because i've read it like last summer um it's written, you see it from like two points of view, you see it from her, from Claire's point of view, first person, and then you see it from Jamie's point of view, I believe, but uh, his point of view is written like in third person, I think, but you still see, see the, the events through his eyes, because for a long time they're separated, as I said, until they meet up in Edinburgh. Um, yeah, they're separated and you get to see their lives until they you reunite. So let me read you the first, well, the prologue, <clears throat> which is written, from, is written from Claire's point of view. Because I suppose she's like the protagonist of these books. It starts with her. Um, so prologue. When I was small, I never wanted to step in puddles. Not because of any fear of drowned worms or wet stockings. I was by and large a grubby child with a blissful disregard for felt of any kind. It was because I couldn't bring myself to believe that that perfect smooth expanse was no more than a thin film of water over solid earth. I believed it was an opening into some fat fathomless space. Sometimes seeing the tiny ripples caused, caused by my approach, I thought the puddle impossible, impossibly deep, a bottomless sea in which the lazy coil of tentacle and gleam of scale lay hidden with a threat of huge bodies and sharp teeth adrift and silent in the far down depths. And then, looking down into reflection, I would see my own round face and frizzled hair against a feather, featherless blue sweep and think instead that the puddle was the entrance to another sky. If I stepped in there, I would drop at once and keep on falling, on and on, into blue space. The only time I would dare to walk through a puddle was at, uh, was at twilight, when the evening stars came out. If I looked in the water and saw one lighted pin prick there, I could splash through unafraid. For if I should fall into the puddle and onto, on into space, I could grab hold of the star as I passed and be, and be safe. Even now, when I see a puddle in my path, my mind half halts, through my feet, though my feet do not, then hurries on, with only the echo of the thought left behind. What if this time you fall? And that's a beautiful prologue, I, I, um, I dare to say. Um, and it reminds me of the TV series, how they've done it. If 
felt so um it's worth so faithful to the books it is just the way they shot it it's exactly as you you imagine it i suppose at least i did just what seeing her claire stepping from a carriage and on to the puddle and landing in edinburgh in 1700s once again and going to look for jamie leaving her daughter behind and stepping in new dangers and uncertainties not knowing what she will find there um she she does find records which is the reason she goes back in time um and there to try and find her love um because they together with her daughter and another scottish man lovely character as well um i think his name is roger um they go back in uh, they look for records to see if there is um yeah there's any proof that Jamie died on the Culloden field or if she survived and if she survived where he is and they find records and yeah they basically using those records she equips herself with stuff that she thinks she may need and goes back in time so i don't want to give you more uh, information because i don't want to spoil too much but um yeah it's it's very interesting lots of things happen in the third book in the third season um obviously you have to think this this character they lived apart for 20 years um having not died on the Culloden field Jamie ended up in prison and um he there he meets a man and uh, a relationship develops between them but it's not necessarily what you'd expect um it's it's very beautiful book and i expect the season i think i'm somewhere mid season or at the end of like first half of the season at the moment um i think there's been like four episodes so far and i can't wait the previous episode which was last sunday on stars i believe um yeah i think it was probably was sunday i think it's every sunday um it ends with yeah it ends on land but it's because at some point they will go and a lot of the book takes place on on the sea on the ship on ships and it's it's quite unique because the first two books they take place or a lot of the events take place most of the events take place on land so now it's going to be quite interesting to see them traveling through with the using ships and and this luxurious as for uh, landscape because I, th- i think they filmed in south africa yeah something like that and yeah it's very exciting as i mentioned um the custom custom design is beautiful um the characters uh, have been the, the actors ca- uh, cast um they were cast very appropriately for the characters um yeah it's it's a joy to watch honestly um but i'm glad i've read the book first um <laughs> it was a bit hard to get into this not hard but it was a bit since i knew what was going to happen um i was like analyzing oh that did it happen in the book that happened this way why didn't they portray it this way but you have to, as mentioned before it's a different format the tv series so they had to adapt it um but as i said um the actors are doing a great job um Sam Hugan is playing the main uh the female lead uh, Jamie Alexander Malcolm Fraser Claire Fraser is played by um Kat- Katrina Balls uh her other husband Frank I don't know the name of the actor I'm terrible with the names but he's brilliant because he plays this like double edge character as well well not character because he's like two characters in in different centuries so he's he's really nasty in the 1700s but yeah that's a different point of view um the different point it's a different matter so um yeah um, the location used in in the book like Scotland mostly um 
beautiful. The TV series makes use of that. Uh, the beautiful landscape of Scotland it really makes you want to travel there. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend this TV series, book series to you. I can't wait. I'll probably wait for the TV or for the season to finish and then I'll pick up on the other books because I've been busy writing my own books and reading other books by the authors. So yeah, but as soon as the season will end, I'll probably want to <laughs> continue to find out what happens um, in, the, in the other books. Um, yeah, as, uh, I would I highly recommend reading this series. As I said, it has a little bit of everything, time travel, history, romance, it has eroticism, not just like romance and that's it. It has, it's for adults definitely, but it's beautifully done, beautifully shot, beautifully acted. Yeah, I highly recommend, I recommend watching it, and, but please read the books, books first. Um, so yeah, that was all for today. Um, um, that's it. I um, don't know if I, did I show you the cover. I'll show you the cover again. They, they're using the, the main actors. Oh no, that's the old cover. Oh well, that's the old cover. But let me show you the cover. It's with the two main actors, Claire Frey, well, Katrina Balf and Susan Hugan. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I can't highly recommend this book. Uh, it's a really long video. I should have made it much shorter, but as always, I always end up talking about all sorts of stuff so yeah go go and check out diana gabaldon's books as i as mentioned she has like nine of them voyager is the third book in the series and it's beautifully written it's quite long but you don't really feel like it's just I, I remember reading it last summer and i think i've read it in a couple of days it's just it's like so entertaining it has a lot of humor which i love in books um yeah, it has all deep emotions. It's uh, it's lovely. Uh, thank you for joining me again, and have a lovely, lovely afternoon. Currently, the weather in England is not as great. It's perfect for reading, so I'm just gonna go and pick up from what I left on reading a book by uh, a new author I've discovered. So I'm gonna check that. I'm currently, like halfway within the stories. So yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for listening and have a lovely afternoon wherever you are. Take care of yourself. Bye.